Good morning, everyone, and uh, greetings from sunny California. My name is Ari Getcher, an uh, engineer at Palantir Technologies, and I've been working with the Palantir Grameen team to put together uh, the data from the Grameen Foundation uh, and their wonderful Community Knowledge Worker program. So by a quick way of inf introduction, for those who don't know, the uh, CKW program, CKW stands for Community Knowledge Worker, um, employs people using Android phones to go out and have contact with rural farmers um, in order to collect uh, inf both demographic information about the farmers and disseminate information about agriculture uh, to the farmers so that they can they can uh, produce uh, more efficiently or, or different types of things that they wouldn't be able to do with information. So it, for what we did for the Hackathon Challenge specifically um, was to integrate uh, an extra couple sources of data into the base level gramming data they get from the, the Community Knowledge Worker program. So uh, we added in actually a, a database of soil samples taken all over Uganda that have incredibly uh, rich information about the soils in Uganda, as well as uh, a bunch of in administrative information about uh, where the district boundaries are and what other resources are available um, to farmers in Uganda uh, to, to raise food security. So. Uh, Without further ado, I'll uh, go ahead and jump into uh, our application and provide some voice over there to show you sort of what we're looking at. The soil data that we brought into the system actually consists of 28,000 discrete uh, soil samples geocoded, taken all over Uganda. Uh, here you can actually see the range of pH in the samples that was measured in the soil, all the way down from 4.3 to 9.1. Uh, I've highlighted a region of this uh, of, of these measurements that actually calls out the, the region of pH where four out of five of the staples of Uganda uh, grow best in that, that pH range of soil. So um, maize, coffee, bananas, and soybeans all want a pH in that range. Cassava, which is the fifth uh, staple, actually has a much broader range. Um, so to, to sort of come up with some helpful information here, uh, I've actually drilled down on all of the sort of more basic side of samples. Uh, so if we go and actually look at a chart of these again by pH, uh, we can see uh, something similar to what we saw before. Uh, it's a little more sparse, but it still does actually comprise 6,400 different samples uh, taken all over Uganda. If we go ahead and plot those on a map, you get something that looks like this. Um, so this is a heat map of uh, all the areas. You can see the, the, the key down here, the pH values of all the areas of basic, where basic soil has been measured. Uh, inside Uganda. And so uh, as, as researchers uh, and CKWs are figuring out ways to, to troubleshoot you know, problems that people are having with their crops, one thing they can do is use this very uh, detailed information to basically figure out where exactly, um, you know, what exactly the soil conditions are. Uh, switching gears, I want to talk about using this data as an early warning system for both crop disease and blight and uh, issues with livestock. So here what we have in front of us uh, is a histogram that shows us the 364 questions in the system that relate to soybeans and maggot pests. Uh, we sort of narrowed this down from a field of 292,000 questions about crops and uh, from a larger set of the, the million different queries that have come in through the CKW program. So I can take these uh, questions, these queries, and actually plot where they were asked on a map and it'll give me some sense of where maggots and soybeans you know, are colliding and the maggots are winning. Um, however, what you're seeing here doesn't actually have a good sense of time to it. And I can use our timeline helper to actually help us tell a story about what's going on here. So we found this uh, outbreak in, in the Oyam district in the, the sort of north central part of Uganda um, that happened in April. And we'll sort of start by ghosting out everything. Um, you can see the, the yellow dots are sort of the individual events, but they're, they're not actually in this time window. As I make this larger, we'll see things start to pop up right in that sort of center portion of the screen right here. And we can see one or two early on in April. And as we move through April, what we see is it gets worse. Uh, by the time we get to May, it's pretty serious. And then actually it's mid-May to, to late May where the outbreak really uh, gets its legs. So how would we stop something like this in the future? We can actually see these questions coming in over time. It wasn't something that actually happened overnight. It's sort of built up over the course of a month and a half. So we have a, a really great feature in the system that we call um, 
feeds. It's very similar to Google Alerts, where that search I did to find the maggots in the first place, I can actually turn into what's called a feed. And as new data comes into the system every day, it'll alert me and say, hey, look, there's been you know five new queries about maggots and soybeans. Maybe you should take a look. And this is a great way to set up an early warning system uh, for these kinds of problems. Finally, using our map layers functionality, we were able to bring in numerous uh, shape files pointing out all of Uganda's civic institutions uh, and healthcare facilities. So here we're actually seeing a visualization of the sort of uh, what are called level two health clinics that are scattered throughout the country. Those are the little red squares. The big green squares are actual full-fledged hospitals. Um, so by bringing this sort of full scope view, you get a lot of situational awareness of figuring out what the right institutions are to leverage to, to deal with food security issues as you localize them down uh, to the different districts that exist inside of Uganda, which we also have brought in. Uh, so it's really a, a really great view of the country uh, from an agricultural perspective uh, and an infrastructure perspective. So that's all we have to show for this weekend. It's been really great to be able to not only uh, you know do a dive onto this data and really figure out how to make sense of it, but to really uh, not just when that we can bring in the data, but to build a system that will sort of deliver enduring value of the more data that's added to it. Um, it's really been fantastic. Um, I'd like to really thank uh, both uh, the Grammy Foundation for, for making this possible by collecting this amazing data and really staying true to their mission on everything that they do, uh, as well as USAID for putting this whole event together and the ability for us to come together and work on such an important problem. I know that uh, speaking for myself and everyone at Pounds here, uh, this has been a fantastic event and I think uh, the world needs more things like this uh, to happen more frequently. So thank you so much for making it happen and uh, we'll catch you next time. Bye.